Well, today it is my pleasure to, in the dark, uh, introduce you to, this is uh, Antonio Correa. He is the pastor of Lego LBN Church in Guinari, Venezuela. Uh, we had a chance to connect with him 20 years ago. This church sent me on a mission trip. Uh, we got to connect with actually Antonio and some of his friends who pastor alongside him uh, at the church that they're at now. Um, we're, we're starting a new series today, and it's called God of My Story. And oftentimes, as Americans, when we think about how God might work in our story, we see it through a fairly narrow lens. We think about American Christianity and how things generally work. And so today, uh, you get to hear from a completely different perspective how God is working in the story of a guy who lives uh, quite a long ways from here, but is doing the same work through the same gospel. It's the same Savior, which is Jesus Christ. So you guys, welcome Antonio Correa with me. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Well, God bless you all. Um, thank you, Jason, Pastor Jason, and his family, and the elders from this church. Thank you, Cross Community Church, for letting me come here and, and trying to speak it to you. <laughs> I will do my best, but English is very hard for me. But here I am. You are, you are praying for me right now? Thank you. <laughs> well... Uh, as uh, Jason say, I am from Venezuela. I, I love my country. I think Venezuela is a beautiful country. But uh, I can tell you that many difficult, time, difficult things are coming in Venezuela these last 20 years. So uh, I want to speak to you about what's going on in Venezuela in these times. I want to let you know how it's situation there. But I want to let you know how God is working in Venezuela and how God is God of my history, of your history, and from all our lives. Amen? So the big question is what is happening in Venezuela? And many people around the world or by internet or my friends, they ask me, what's happening in Venezuela? Many people just don't understand what's happening in Venezuela. Did you hear before about Venezuela? Yeah, you hear what's going on in Venezuela? Well, uh, let me give you a perspective about it. Uh, something that is happening in Venezuela, and uh, I want to show you how even how many poor people we have. We have 94.5% of Venezuelans are in extremely poverty. I mean, when I say extreme, it's extreme. Uh, I, can, I can tell you that many people there even... They only have one meal at the day, and that meal will be rice with some beans, not, not much beans, some beans. So it is happening right now in my country. The thing is that it's, it's not the same. Uh, it's not our history. It's only these past 20 years that this is coming through Venezuela. So before these 20 years, uh, things were way much better. We, we were one of the richest countries in Latin America. We have a big uh, oil industry in Venezuela, and all this is already broken. So three, of, three out of four Venezuelans are really, really poor people. The next, please. Uh, next slide, please. Okay. The economic infl inflation is close to 2,000% per year. So you can imagine that you're going to buy something today, Next day will be different prices. Next week, <laughs> every time. So every time you go to the supermarket or something, you have to, to have faith and pray. You know, oh, Lord, dear Lord, please. But, well, that's, that's the reality. I just go to Walmart here because, you know, in America, everybody goes to Walmart almost every day. <laughs> you can say amen to that. So I go to Walmart here, and uh, well, when I see prices of the things that you normally buy for your home, uh, meat or rice or whatever you, you know, food for your home, when I see prices here, I can see that here is even cheaper than what, how we buy in Venezuela. So you can imagine how everything is more expensive and more expensive, and most live on less than $12 per month. And the, the less that you need to live, to eat, and, and have a normal, li 
uh, normal low life will be $350 per month. So you can imagine you, if you have only $12 for your next month, I guess you even cannot imagine with $350 for the next month. So that's really what is going on in Venezuela. And uh, the people say, why? Why, Antonio, is this happening? Well, when you give control only to one person for so long, that will be always that way. The reality is that the government that we have there, they are ruling and taking control of everything the military, the food distribution, electricity, construction, oil. They say, we're going to give you free health care, free gas, free food, free houses, free education. And the reality today is that nothing of these things are working that, like they should work. So, yeah, we have almost free gas for, to fuel our car, but the real, reality thing in my, in my daily is that if I want to fuel my car, that will be uh, very cheap, 30 liter, liters for that, but, but um, I only fuel my car every two months with these 33 liters. If I want more gas, I will pay $1 for one liter, which is very much for me. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, it's almost the same price that you pay here for your gas, uh, is what I pay for my gas in Venezuela. But you don't have 2,000% <laughs> inflation in, in your country, right? So you have some inflation. And I, I, what I hear is that these past years, you have a little more. But you can imagine 2,000% every year. And every year is more and more and more. So this is happening in, in my country. Next, please. The insecurity is getting bigger and harder. It's very hard. Sometimes in Venezuela, when uh, insecurity, you know, bigger cities are more dangerous, right? It's the same there. I, thanks God I live in a small city. It's a little safe, but you always have to be taking care of everything, and especially the family. Even right now I came here, and I don't bring my wife with me because her visa expired. So that's... It's, you need, you need faith to do something like that because it's not the best way that you leave your wife or your family and go very far away for two or three weeks. So uh, this is a big thing. And what I tell you about the hospitals, uh, they say healthcare is free. Yeah, it is free. You can go to the hospital free. But the only one that you will receive when you, when you go to the hospitals is that you will have a doctor that he can check you. But if you need anything else, if you need alcohol, if you need uh, band-aids or something like that, you, you have to go outside, buy this, and bring it to the doctor because doctors have nothing to take care of you. So that's really extremely uh, tough situation for our country right now. It's sad, but I think that God always has a plan for everything. God always has something that He is doing, even when you are not looking what He is doing. Um, I have a big question, and I think I have the answer. The big question is, is there hope for Venezuela? And I, I think it's the next slide, please. Next one, please. There you go. Is there hope for Venezuela? I think this is the answer. Jesus is the hope of Venezuela. Because I think that Jesus is the hope of Venezuela, of the United States, of all of us. Amen? He is our hope. So, but many people ask me, okay, Antonio, if you can come here to the United States, why you just don't stay here, bring your wife, and do something here? And that's a, everybody is like, why you are in Venezuela if you can be in other places? My dad was from Spain. I have a Spain nationality, so I can just move to Spain and have a normal life there, or let's say a better life than in Venezuela. But something happens 
uh, to me, in my personality testimony, that I want to share with you the God of my history. I want to share this with you today. So when I was 19 years old, 19 or 20 years old, that was 20 years ago, I remember I came here to the United States, and I came with, you know, the illusions and perspective of the American dream. So I want the American dream, and my father just sent me to see if I can find some college or something like that. And I was very open to that and happy, oh, yeah, I will have a great future in the United States, you know. And, uh, well, my father was a middle-class guy that he can pay something for my college or whatever. And uh, I was with big expectation of what God can do in my life here in the United States. I came here with my brother, Josh Snyder, and his family. I remember I came here and spent some time here in Poro, like one or two weeks. I don't remember how many. Uh, and later I stay here and I go with Josh to college and, you know, see everything. I was like, oh, my God, you can imagine if... I just stay here in the studio. I, I was excited about it. But I go to Atlanta for a few weeks too. I, I spent in Atlanta like four months, I remember. And uh, in Atlanta, I go to a big church, huge church. And I remember that was the Jude's night. When I go to, to this church and see all what they're doing, all the lights, all, you know, the... 3,000 kids there. Is, that was crazy. I see all this, and my first impression was like, wow. Oh, my God. You know, it, that was incredible for me. But the second thing I think, I feel, was angry. Angry because I think in my mind, and I say, God. Why they have all this and we don't have anything? Why they have too much and we don't have anything? Are they more your kids than us? And that was the first time in my life that I have like a, my first call from God. He touched my heart and said, I want to do something in your country, but you need, you need to be there because I want to use you in your country. Well, I say, okay, Lord, I have another plans. I can give you some cell phone numbers from my friends there. You can call them. <laughs> Good guys. And he said, no, I will use them. But I want to use you there. So I go back in my 19 years old with, you know, my dreams and my expectations. I just go back to Venezuela and I start to say, okay, I'm here. Let's see what's going on. And 20 years later, I can tell you that I love what God is doing in my life, in my ministry. And uh, I, I am not going to move from Venezuela only if God says, but if not because of the situation. Because I believe more to God than what I see in the situation. Amen? So, why is this? Why I stay in Venezuela? Because God calls me, and I remember one verse, special verse for me, Isaiah 58, 12. And this verse Touch my heart. It says, you will be called repairer of demolished walls, restorer of passable streets. What I didn't know in that time is that these uh, demolished walls will be literal. Will be, the country will be literal demolished walls. But I say, okay, Lord, here I am and use me. So I want to share with you this morning what I learned in this last time. Uh, what I learned in this difficult time. For 20 years, I have been involved in ministry. These last 12 years, my, me and my wife start a new church, plant a new church, and this is wonderful to see how God can do many things through you. And I want to, show, I want to share with you what I learned in these few years. 
First thing I learned is you have no idea what God may do through one act of obedience. I mean, you have no idea how God can make great things in your life and in another people's life when you obey him and when you see that you can follow his will. Now, I always say to my church, it's not the same thing to put God in my dreams that put me in his dreams. They are two different, very different things for our life. So what I decided in, in, when I was 19 years old, and what I decided right now is obey God. Not put him in my dreams. Many people pray and say, oh Lord, I have these plans, bless my plans. Maybe he will say to you, that's not my plan. So you cannot imagine how if you follow God's plans, you will be full of grace, love, of power in, in the Holy Spirit. It's God through you. you can, I can tell you hundreds of young people taking good decisions in Venezuela, and I love that. I can tell you hundreds of histories of married that they are having troubles, and now they are very strong people in Jesus Christ. I can tell you how hundreds and hundreds of people in every church in Venezuela, they just go to receive Jesus every weekend, and how they are thirsty of Jesus Christ. I can tell you hundreds of histories of what God is doing in my country, and I can tell you this because I obey God. I can tell you that God can fill your heart, make, give you a purpose in your life. You will enjoy it only if you trust in God. Only if you trust in God. Okay, the second thing that God teaching me this time is never let the presence of a storm cause you to doubt the presence of God. Because it's not easy to follow Jesus. Something that I don't like in many churches is that they preach like if you receive Jesus, you will win a lottery or something like that. And I don't see that on the Bible. What I see on the Bible is when Jesus said to his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. So I'm, I'm not saying that like if you are a Christian, you will be suffering all your time. No. But it's not a, it's, it's not a party uh, situation. If you want to follow Jesus, that will be, be sometimes hard. But, but please, never let the presence of this storm that you are facing right now make you forgive the power of the God that you are believing. I don't know what you are facing right now. I don't know if you are facing a divorce or maybe problems in your marriage or maybe problem with your kids or maybe problem in your finance or whatever. Let me tell you, God is bigger than any other thing in your world. Amen? Sorry, but I am Latin guy, so I am. <laughs> but God is bigger. God is bigger. Please, if you're facing, facing something hard in your life right now, don't forget, God is bigger of what you are facing in this moment. Amen? Uh, I understand that you don't always have to understand the plan of God to trust that God has a purpose in your life. I mean, you don't have to have all details of what God wants to do in your life to follow him because you are in God's hand. You are in God's hand. You are the child of God. We just seen that. It's different. It's beautiful. This band, they play beautiful and we... Enjoy to worship the Lord. But please, don't you sing this today. When you are in a problem, when you are facing something bad in your life, just remember, I am a child of God. Amen? So, something that I know for sure is what the Bible says, that Jesus is in the throne. And if the Bible says something, that's truth. 
The Bible says Jesus is in the throne, and I believe Jesus is in the throne. I remember this to myself many times of my life. When things get hard, when you don't have enough for something that you want to do, when problems are big, when you're facing big things, please remember, anything in this world will make Jesus go down of the throne. He is always in the throne. He is always king of king. He is your God. So don't let one storm don't let you see what God wants to do in your life, my brothers, my sisters, Cross Community Church. We just passed the COVID situation. Many didn't pass this, but we did it. Because God has a purpose with you. God wants to do something in your life. In this church, I love the kind of people you are, how you love people, how you love each other. Well, that's wonderful. And that has something with the, my third um, learning. That is, the church exists for a mission larger than any one of our individual lives. The church is bigger. I think the church is the dream of God. The dream of God to save the world. There is no plan B for God. He only has one plan. And Jesus said in Matthew chapter 28, go and make disciples. And that's the word in the church. So I see how many people you have here serving and how you, uh, you, uh, you, you give so strong to the service. That's wonderful. I love how people can serve others. But I want to let you know, church, I think this is the best moment for you to believe God that this church is going to grow up way much more. You have too, much, too many people to find on this area. I mean, there is thousands of people here in Poro that they don't know Jesus. Well, God wants to use you here in Poro to raise these people and speak about Jesus and so that they can know Jesus and have a relationship with our God. So I hope God is going to use you very much for this because the church exists for a mission. The thing is that we are very self-centered. We all, we all are. You, me, we are. We all are very centered in, in, in ourselves, in our problems, in our ways. And the Apostle Paul says in Colossians 3, 2, set your affections on things above, not on things on the earth. I think that's very great because we have to stop looking at us like the center of the world. We, we have to see that there is more life after this. That's why we need Jesus. Because there is, there is the real life is not what we are living right now. The real life is in eternity with our God. So Colossians says you have to see farther of what you're living right now. There is some people that that they want to walk like they are the, the center of the universe. And brothers, sisters, please put your eyes on God's will, on God's church, on what he's doing through you in this community, cross community church. I'm very sure that God is using you and God is going to do biggest thing that what you are imagining right now. Because you are people of God. Amen? You are the people of God. So we have to start see what God is calling us to do in our life. And believe me, please. I can tell you from my history. It's not because somebody tell me. I have, I have my own plans for my life. 
I did it. For, I mean, I'm sure that right now I have some plans that is more my plans than God's plans. That's why we have to pray for. That's why we need to follow Jesus. But maybe you have plans for your life. That's okay. It's good to have plans. But take these plans. Write it all. I put in the God's presence and say, okay, Lord. I need to follow your will. This is what I plan. I tell you, I pray this with my Lord. I say, this is, these are my plans. But you know I am like a little crazy, sometimes dumb. So I need your wisdom. What do you want me to do? So please write your plans and put it in the God's hand and believe him that because his plans always will be bigger and way much more blessed for your life. Many people think, they tell me, my friends, my closest friends, my family, I have a brother, he living in Spain, my sister living in England. I have all my family <laughs> very far away. And they always tell me, you need to come here. You, I mean, like, you have to be uh, in safe place. God can use you in, in Spain. God can use you in, in London. God can use you in the United States. I say, yeah, God can use me whatever he wants. But the thing is that what he wants right now is in Venezuela. <laughs> so I'm not going to move because of this situation. So enough of talking about me. What about you? Is God moving you to something? Is God telling you something and you don't obey him? Is God, is you facing something that makes you forgive the greatest of our God? Please, stop looking at what you're facing. And start looking the great God that we have. Because we have a living God, a great God. That has the power to give you a purpose in your life and give you a great life, full of grace and love, but in his ways. Amen? So, well, I want to finish with this that I, is in my heart. This, this phrase is the local church is the hope for the world. I believe the local church. Is the hope in Venezuela? Is the hope in the United States? And now, my brothers and sisters, more than ever, we need to preach the gospel, the real gospel of Jesus Christ. The one is in the Bible. More than ever, we need to preach everywhere. So thank you for being part of what God is doing in Venezuela. Thank you for being part of what God is doing right here. But I want to challenge you to move your life, your heart, and everything you are doing and say to the Lord, okay, here I am. What do you want me to do? I would like to pray with you. Is that okay? So if you, if you think uh, in this time, I want to invite you to think about what is God telling you today? What is God telling you to do in this time of your life? What is this area in your life where you don't obey God and you know you have to obey God? Put this area in God's hand. And today, He wants to make you free. Oh Lord, thank you for the opportunity to be here with my brothers, my sisters from Cross Community Church. Bless this church, bless these people. And put in their heart the strong, put in their heart the faith to believe you, to be with you, to follow you, and obey you every day of their life. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.